has been a day. So I got a COVID test a day before my flight and I thought for sure that it would come back within 24 hours. Um, so then I would be fine to get on the flight, but I also didn't think I needed a COVID test to get on the plane since my first flight was just to Boston, so it was domestic. Um, mistake number one. So I get to the airport around noon and my flight was at three on Friday. And I get a COVID test right when I get to the airport because I needed one within 24 hours of entering Norway. But then I go to check into my flight and it's like 12.45. When I get to the check-in desk, the woman says she needs a negative COVID test for me. So I had to spend $200 on a rapid COVID test and I had to wait 30 minutes for it. So it was like 1.15, I wanna say, when I got the test. I'm like crying in the airport, running around, trying to figure out like, can I check my bag before I get checked into the flight? Blah, 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 blah. Like, how do I make this go as quick as possible? Because I had to wait 35 minutes for the test. There was no way to check in early, so I just had to wait for this test. And then at like 1.50, I go down, check in, get my bag checked. The guy who checked me in was super nice, and he printed out my boarding pass for my first flight and then my itinerary. Just my itinerary. This will be important later in the story. So I go through security, it was super fast, it was fine. Um, and then I got to my gate and I had like five minutes to spare so all I could do was fill up my water bottle but I got on the plane, I made it, it was fine. The first flight, there was an annoying dog barking but that was the only bad thing. Land in Boston and I follow where everyone else is going. We go down a huge flight of stairs and then I went up a huge flight of stairs. And then I went to one of those little kiosk things where you can figure out it's like where your gate is. And I thought my gate was in the F terminal. So I went to the F terminal. I found where I thought it was. I swear it's at, I swear my life it's at Amsterdam uh, at the gate that I went to. So I'm sitting there just going on my phone, doing random shit for 30 minutes. And keep in mind, this was an hour and a half layover. So 30 minutes in, I just look up at the board for whatever reason, and I notice it says Reykjavik. And so then panic ensues. So I go down the stairs again, go up the stairs again, and I'm just trying to find people, like anyone I can talk to. Oh, I was also looking on the website, like trying to figure out what gate I was supposed to be at. And I asked these two flight attendants who were off duty and they were super nice. They were like, I don't, we're not based here. We don't know how to get around this airport, but it looks like you have to go to the E-terminal. So then I'm running around trying to find the E-terminal because I couldn't find a map of anything. I couldn't find any signs saying where it was. Finally, this guy told me like, oh, you have to go down here and then take a right. So I finally get to the E-terminal and then I figure out I have to go through security again. So I get in line for security. Thankfully, I had checked my first bag and I um, checked my second bag at the gate. So all I had was a backpack. So I get in line for security. But it's a huge line and at this point I had 30 minutes because it took me 30 minutes to figure out where the E-terminal was. And then it's like 8.10 and I start panicking because I'm like my flight is in 20 minutes. There's no way I'm going to get through this huge line. So I run up to the front of the line because this nice woman behind me was like, if you're in a rush, you need to just ask people if you can go to the front. But then I started crying <laughs> for the third time that day. Love that for me. Um, I started crying and I just went to the front and I was like, my flight leaves in 20 minutes. And the guy was like, you don't have a boarding pass because I thought that my itinerary was a boarding pass because it had a little code on it. And I thought it would let me get onto the plane, but it wasn't. So he's like, you need to go check in. So I'm running back to the check-in. I run past each little check-in desk and I can't find KLM. And so I just walk up to this huge group of people that work at the airport and I was like, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but my flight leaves in 20 minutes and I need to check in. And th at first they were like, you need to go to the information desk downstairs. And I was like, my flight leaves in 20 minutes. And they were like, okay, you just need to go to the front of the TSA line and tell them like that we told you to go and that your flight leaves in 20 minutes. So I run to the front again, I'm tweaking, and the guy at the front was really nice and put me in this separate security line where there were barely any people and I went through in like five minutes. And so 
I don't remember when my flight left, but it was like 10 minutes and I was running through the airport. My gate was E5 and when I was in the security line initially, they were calling all these names saying you need to get to the gate or like the flight is leaving and they didn't call my name, but I was confused because I was going to Amsterdam and my flight was supposed to be E5. I didn't know whether I had the wrong gate or what was going on. So I get up to the gate and I'm like, I, I'm on this flight, here's my itinerary, I don't, they didn't print the boarding pass, I give them my passport, whatever. And the guy's like, you are so lucky that you're making this flight because the flight was held because there were other people that were late. But since I hadn't even checked in, they weren't waiting for me, so they would have just gone once the other people got there. So once again, I'm crying, I finally get on the plane. And then the rest of that plane was fine, except I didn't sleep at all because they were like 20 babies. And then we land in Amsterdam. I finally got to a gate on time. I double checked everything. The Bergen flight was fine. It was just an hour and 40 minutes. Then I arrive in Bergen. Oh, okay. The nice thing about this is that I had all my paperwork ready, whereas so many people didn't. So I was all fine. I had my residence permit, my negative COVID test that I paid $200 for. So I went through the check-in fine, got my COVID test. It took like 20 minutes. It was negative, obviously. Wait, I don't want to jinx it though, but yeah, it was negative. And so then I had to wait for like 45 minutes because we were waiting for all the people that were going to be on our little shuttle to get our luggage. So I'm about to fall asleep, starving in this chair, waiting for 45 minutes, but whatever. Um, we finally get on the shuttle and then we go to the baggage area. And of course, because not enough bad stuff has happened today, my luggage is missing. And so I guess that brings us to now. We just checked into the quarantine hotel and I still don't have any luggage, so Basically, what I'm rocking is the A24 sweatshirt and leggings. Um, but this is actually a nice hotel. But I'll give you a little tour anyway, so. This is the door. I don't know where any of the lights are, so you probably can't see anything. But yeah, this is the bathroom. I haven't figured out where the light is, but it is what it is, right? Okay. Um, this is the room. Nice mirror. A uh, lamp, TV, a closet well, that I have nothing, no use for because I don't have any clothing. Um, here's this window. The students, they took us to this host, or not hostel, hotel that's in like the middle of the city. But all of the um just people that were here for tourist stuff had to stay in a hostel right oh my god i keep saying hostel they had to stay in a hotel right by the airport the reason i was emphasizing like having all my paperwork when i arrived in norway is because so many people didn't even know that we had to quarantine and there were there was one guy and he was like i'm staying here for five days and he was being told he had to quarantine for three days which is just a big L, but I'm kind of confused about how people didn't know because everywhere where you researched it said quarantine information. I don't know. I'll keep this updated. I didn't film anything in in any of the airports or planes because I was crying like 85% of the time and the other 15% I was sleepy or hungry or just stressed out in general, so... Okay, I was going to go to bed because it's like 6 o'clock now and I haven't slept in like 26 hours. But I really wanted a toothbrush, so I called the hotel line, whatever, the lobby, and they said, oh, there's a store if you just come down to the lobby and go to the right. And so I thought they just meant there would be a little store in the hotel. But what turns out is that you can literally just go grocery shopping. I don't know if this is actually allowed, but... I got to the lobby and there was this super nice girl and she was like, yeah, my luggage got lost too. I'll take you to the place where I went when I needed to get a toothbrush and all that stuff. And so she takes me to, it's just some like dingy little grocery store, whatever. But I'll give you a little haul. I got some breakfast food because I was like, I don't really trust the food here. So I got two bananas and two yogurts. 
Um, I got a couple of these granola bars. I don't know, they were just really cheap and I figure I'm gonna want more food. And then I got some apple and mango juice. Oh, oops, I wasn't even, I was looking at it for my own self, but yeah. And then I got more water. I'm sorry, mom, for getting bottled water, but I'm scared of the tap water because I took a shower and it smelled like a swamp and that made me really not want to, I don't know, maybe I'll talk to the people in the lobby about that. But, and then I got an apple and then toothpaste. Yes, I did buy a whole thing, but whatever. It's my favorite toothpaste, so it doesn't matter. And then a toothbrush, chapstick, and deodorant. Um, so that was successful and that girl was so nice. Okay, but my dinner also arrived, so let's see. Oh, this looks better than the last Smurbra little sandwich I gave me. Okay, wait, let's see. Wait, why is it just like on the bread? Okay, so it's got tomato, mayo, I, that's literally like a broccoli and a mandarin orange, so I'm a little confused, but wow, in all her glory. Um, yeah, there's that. Then let's see. This looks like a hot meal. This is a lot of food. All right, some potatoes, and then I don't even know what this is. It looks like it's like some sort of beef stew situation. I'm a little scared of this. This is definitely like airplane food. Oh, and then these are just so far. Yeah, okay. I should honestly just save these for the plane, but yeah, all right. Okay, yeah, that's my little update for now. Hopefully I will meet that girl again or meet some other people because everybody's been so nice and this could actually turn out to be fun. Okay, so right now it's Monday the 23rd and it's my second day of quarantine and this morning I went out and did some shopping because I still don't have my luggage. Um, so yes, I'm still wearing my outfit from the airport but luckily KLM is paying for some clothes and toiletries and stuff because my luggage has been delayed so long. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give you guys a little haul. Everyone here has been super nice, but um, the one unfortunate thing is that I found out I have to wait until Saturday to get out of quarantine, um, which kind of sucks because I'm missing the whole first week of Folk High School, but there's not really anything I can do at this point, so it is what it is, I guess. Yeah, okay, I'll show you what I got. Okay, so the flight that my luggage was on arrived today at 11, which meant that I had to do all my shopping before 11, or at least try, um, just so that everything works out with KLM and getting um, refunded for all the stuff that I bought today. So I had to make sure I was doing all my shopping like really early and efficiently. Also, I just found out that I'm not sure if I was actually supposed to be going into shops or anything, but whatever. I'm probably negative anyway so um the first place i went was Kix, i think and it was like a makeup store it's pretty much just like sephora um and the first thing i got was this urban decay 24 7 glide on eyeliner which i have in black but i got it in dark brown just because i wear brown mascara so i wanted it to match i don't know i was kind of just buying stuff that i want but wouldn't have wouldn't have actually bought for myself if it was my own money because 
try not to spend a lot of money on some like makeup um and then i got this dior um lip glow lip it's like a lip balm lipstick kind of thing and it's in this like dark nude color which i really like um it's more of like a clear sort of thing so it's not actually super pigmented but that's what i wanted so i'm happy with that and then i got this nars concealer because normally it's like 30 dollars and why would anyone ever spend that much on makeup but obviously if klm was paying for it um i was yeah a little more lenient with prices and then next i went to this store called i mean i don't really know how to pronounce it but some so some so or something like that and um my sister kaya said that they were a good brand but just kind of expensive um which yeah i got this cashmere sweater which is so nice and soft but it was i mean wait let's see if it says it was 1600 kroner so i think it was like 180 dollars or something but obviously like I said, since KLM was paying for all, or is hopefully going to be paying for all of this stuff, I was kind of more willing to just, just buy whatever I wanted. I don't know. I didn't actually buy that much stuff. It was just more pricey stuff. So I kind of went for quality over quantity. Um, and then next I went to this store called Hoya or something like that. And my sister told me about them and she said it was kind of like, a fancier version of Nordstrom and there I got this David Bowie shirt which is so cute and it's kind of made to look vintage which I really love um and then I just got this cute little hair clip which was like the only reasonable price thing I got it was like $20 no it was like 10 I would not pay $20 for a hair clip um yeah so I got those two things at the Hoya or whatever um, and then the last place I went was just the body shop and these I told my sister these are like the only things that I actually needed that I bought and that was just some um, body butter and a little thing of body wash because I haven't had those at the hotel and they're they're rose scented so they smell so good um, yep so that's all that has really gone on today I've been super jet lagged and getting such weird sleep but overall I'm pretty good just been watching YouTube videos and reading my book and always looking forward to my walks since those are like the only thing we can do in the quarantine hotel but So it's been a minute since I filmed anything because all I've been doing is sitting in the hotel Occasionally going for little walks and stuff, but mainly I've been incredibly bored and Not really motivated to film anything But luckily it's Saturday, which means I've been quarantined for a week So I just got my COVID test. They're actually doing them in the lobby of the quarantine hotel, which was super nice um, so now all I have to do is wait for the results, but Hopefully they will come back pretty soon and I will be able to get out of here. Okay, so I don't know if I said this in the last clip or not, but I got my COVID test, which I was told would take like one or two days to get back. But I just got a text like 20 minutes ago saying it was negative. So naturally I was texting like my family and also my teacher at school that I got my negative test. And my teacher called me like five minutes later and he was like, hey, I'm at the school but I can leave right now, like in five minutes. And so, in a big turn of events, but a good one, um, my teacher's on his way and I'm gonna get to leave in like 30 minutes and finally go to Fauna. So yeah, now I'm like rushing to pack everything, but I wanted to film this just to keep this updated. And I think this will be my last clip because now I'm done with quarantine. And so it's time to start a new video, which hopefully, this will be an exciting week being at Fauna for the first time, so I'll keep you updated. 